In this video, I'm going to cover the absolute necessity for government personnel to begin publicly talking about what they know regarding the UFO presence on our planet. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, in a recent interview with George Knapp, expressed that he's glad his former colleagues in Congress have received closed-door briefings from military officials about UFO encounters. However, he had this to add in the 8 News Now interview. Well, let them say something about it. I'm tired of all this. Uh, they're getting briefings and all that. Let them step up to the plate like I did and do something publicly. Now, why would it be vital for congressional members to publicly talk about the UAP briefings they received? Well, there are many reasons, not the least of which so that we can completely eradicate the pervasive ignorance amongst scientists, politicians, theologians, and academics that the U.S. government doesn't know we are not alone. I am sorry to tell you, but they absolutely, they absolutely do know that we are not alone in this universe. Here is an explicit example of what we must, as a civilization, eradicate once and for all. The following is from a wonderful discussion that occurred at the University of Maryland College Park with moderator Taras W. Matla, journalist Brian Bender, and astronomers Dr. Kelsey Johnson and Dr. Matthew Knight. Question of, for the panelists, which is, do you believe UFOs are real? That intelligently controlled non-terrestrial craft is navigating in our atmosphere. Are we being observed? Anyone can do that. <laughs> the scientists get I to go first. We'll probably all have different answers. Sure, and that's fine. That's that's great. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start, and because you've specified exactly what you're talking about, I'm going to say no. I, I think okay. that there are uh, extraterrestrials piloting crafts here on Earth. Okay. Um, I am perfectly open to the idea that there is life elsewhere in the the, the galaxy, the universe know that they are not as weak as, as Hollywood shows us. I don't think that they're here. And what makes you come to that conclusion? You know, is, is, is it purely just there's there's just not enough physical evidence? I mean, I mean, what what type of evidence as, as, as an astronomer or even not as an astronomer, just as you know, as Matthew Knight, how much what type of evidence do you need to become, you know, a, a believer or conscious that they yeah, So I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that you can't keep secrets when there are lots of people involved. And I don't, I personally don't think that you could have something that many people had seen and everybody's conspiring to keep it quiet, um, especially in, in the, the day and age now where every one of us in the room is carrying around a camera with us all the time. Um, so th that's sort of my, my logistical argument against it is that, especially in the modern era, we would have, and XKCD, by the way, had a great comic about that a few <laughs> years ago, um, but, but that that would have, uh, if, if there were, that the levels we're talking about around, I think they would have been documented in some way by now. Here's the problem. As long as the scientific community is ignorant on the UFO presence in the way that Dr. Matthew Knight is, we as a people and as a civilization, are never going to have the conversation that we really, really must have. Luis Elizondo touched on the need to have a conversation about UAPs with a quote, with this quote taken from an interview with George Knapp. My only desire here and hope is that we at least can now start the conversation without people feeling some sense of stigma or they have to whisper somewhere in the dark corners and the recesses of the rooms and back alleys about this topic. Because in the end, I think that is what potentially, from my perspective, is the greatest threat of all. The fact that we have something going on that we can't talk about, right? If you can't communicate there's a problem, then you can't address the problem. Dr. Matthew Knight, with all due deference, I think you are 1000% wrong in your assessment. And this is precisely why congressional members who have been briefed on UFOs need to start stepping up to the plate to help our civilization to desist from living in such sheer ignorance about the UFO reality. We, we, need, we need that discussion. Here's a quote from Richard Hoffman detailing the extent of what some senators were briefed on. Lou Elizondo told me straight out that these clips, Floor One, Gimbal, Go Fast, are not the whole video. That, in fact, there was incredible evidence showing performance beyond our capabilities in the remaining portions. 
that are indeed classified. The general public is getting just a taste, but not the full meal. The senators got the full meal in the recent briefings. And Elizondo has stated in the past that there is more than those three videos that were released to the public that showcase UAP. And that the other videos are very compelling, and some are even more compelling than the videos already released. I personally don't think that you could have something that many people had seen and everybody's conspiring to keep it quiet, um, especially in, in the, the day and age now where every one of us in the room is carrying around a camera with us all the time. Speaking of cameras, Dr. Matthew Knight, what about the camera that was housed on Chad Underwood's F-18 when he intercepted a Tic Tac object on November 14th, 2004? Were you aware that Commander David Fravor vouches that he saw a higher resolution version of that video than the one that was released to the public? Here is Commander David Fravor testifying regarding the higher resolution video of the Tic Tac vehicle. So what we saw, it looks like a Tic Tac. There's no wings, no rotors, no lifting surfaces, no control surfaces. So just think of a 40 foot long Tic Tac. When you look at the high res video that, good luck finding it, but the original video, that we had, so literally right off the jet recorders and putting on our monitors. So we're watching it on a like a 21 inch or 20 inch TV. You can see in the TV mode because they the the Wizzo, the back seat of the other airplane is going between IR, which is the infrared mode, to an EO, which is electro optical, which is TV, black and white. Uh, when he goes into the TV mode, he's pretty zoomed in. You can see there's two little things that stick out of the bottom of it. In the IR mode, there's no visible plume, there's no heat, there's, you know, it's, it's just a uniform temperature. If it was a jet engine, there would be, you'd see heat coming out one side, you don't see any of that. And then, you know, when it rapidly accelerates off the side in the video towards the end, goes off the left side, you don't see any of that, any of the indicators of what's propelling it, it just moves. That's not where the forensic evidence for the Tic Tac vehicle ends, however. Here's Fravor testifying that he saw the radar tape tape as well from the Tic Tac encounter. What, what tape did you see that nobody's seen? The radar tape. The radar tape off of the airplane that took the video. The bottom line is the U.S. government knows we are not alone and they have the forensic evidence a hundred times over to prove it. They were not twiddling their thumbs over the past 72 years as UAP have been routinely buzzing around our airspace with impunity. They have the radar data, they have the video footage, they have all the forensic evidence you would need to establish that we are not alone. Hell, according to Luis Elizondo, they even have UFO debris. What about all the UAP encounters that have happened at nuclear properties all throughout the United States, in Russia, and who knows where else? Robert Hastings has gathered hundreds of declassified U.S. government documents demonstrating that UFOs have visited nuclear weapons sites. He's also gathered the testimony in relation to these incursions at nuclear sites of more than 160 U.S. military veterans over the past 46 years, which include a few retired colonels and some of these UAP incursions resulted in tampering with the American intercontinental ballistic missiles, rendering them temporarily inoperable. These UAP incursions at nuclear weapon sites are absolute facts. The corroboration between government documents and military veterans in both the United States and Russia make these incursions historical realities. And the only reason it doesn't get the attention it deserves is because of the stigma attached to the UAP subject and the, the dogmatic position of scientists that this can't be happening because the likelihood is just so low. Well, I got a news flash for you. You have to follow the evidence wherever it leads, and the evidence doesn't care about your preconceived no notions nor your assessment of likelihood. The world listens to scientists, which is why UFOs are not taken seriously, frankly. They don't listen to military veterans such as Commander David Fravor. What was it about the movement of this or the appearance of this that, that made you believe it wasn't from this world as, as opposed to something else? Well, the first thing is it had no wings, so you think, okay, it's a helicopter. 
Well, there's no rotor wash in the water. There's no rotors. And when helicopters move side to side, they kind of slow and then they pick up speed going the other way. This was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball bouncing off a wall. It would hit and go the other way and change directions at will. And then the, the, the ability to hover over the water and then start a vertical climb from basically zero up towards about 12,000 feet and then accelerate in less than two seconds and disappear is something I had never seen in my life. They don't listen to former USAF UAP witnesses such as Dr. Bob Jacobs and Dr. Florenz Mansman, who claim they saw film in 1964 of a saucer-shaped craft shooting beams at a warhead traveling six to 8,000 miles an hour at the fringe of space. And of course, that footage was reportedly later confiscated by the Central Intelligence Agency. The world does, however, listen to the U.S. government, the same U.S. government who has claimed for decades that they do not investigate UFOs anymore and that UFOs are not a national security threat. As of December 16th, 2017, we've now learned with the revelation of ATIP that that was all a big, disgusting lie. Governments lie. Who knew? In Robert Hastings' latest book, Confession, he relayed that Luis Elizondo, the former head of ATIP, repeatedly assured him that his work was on the right track and that UFO incursions into nuclear weapon sites continue to generate deep, ongoing concern at the Pentagon. Hastings wrote the following in his latest book. Based on the available anecdotal evidence, including the recent confirmatory statements by U.S. Senator Harry Reid, ATIP physicist Harold Putoff, and ATIP project director Luis Elizondo, the reality of deliberate interference with our weapons of mass destruction by the beings operating the UFOs now seems a certainty. And I'm here to predict that disclosure is not a matter of if, but when. And I think prior to that point, before the U.S. government reveals sufficient data to which even people like Dr. Matthew Knight will have no choice but to recognize that we sure as hell are not alone and the U.S. government knew this for decades, it would be in our best interest to listen to the military veterans who testify that they have seen technological objects without wings, without rotors, without any exhaust plumes maneuvering in ways no Newtonian-based aircraft can. I hope more and more scientists follow in the footsteps of Dr. Maria Zuber. Here is a video in which she talks about her eagerness to be briefed on the recent UFO videos released by the United States government. Well, senators are now getting classified briefings on UFOs, which, you know, is really exciting, I think. Do you think that we'll know whether there's life out there in our lifetimes? Uh, yeah, actually, I've, I've asked to be briefed on those, uh, but I, that hasn't come to pass yet. Our world would be in a much better place if scientists followed in the footsteps of Dr. Maria Zuber. Why is not every scientist on this planet pressuring the U.S. government to be briefed on these recent UFO videos? If there is even just a 1% chance that these videos showcase technological craft that we are not, that 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 were not forged by the hands of man, then the silence from the scientific community is simply put, baffling. On November 2nd, an article was published on thehill.com titled, The Navy Acknowledges UFOs, So Why Aren't They on Washington's Radar by Chris Mellon? The article opens with the following. In what could be a precursor to further stunning developments, the U.S. Navy has publicly acknowledged that the advanced aircraft depicted in several recently declassified gun camera videos are UFOs, or what the Navy prefers to call unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAPs. The Navy designates the object contained in these videos as unidentified aerial phenomena acknowledged Joseph Gratisher, spokesman for the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations, referring to the bizarre vehicles that have brazenly operated in restricted U.S. military airspace. Strangely, this shocking announcement seems to have scarcely been noticed by Congress or the Trump administration. Is the information too jarring and radical to process? Are U.S. government officials in denial? One can only wonder, given the glaring disconnect between the Navy's announcement and the limited government actions to protect U.S. military personnel and the nation as a whole.
The vehicles observed and recorded by U.S. Navy fighter pilots seem impervious to at altitude or the elements. They are able to maneuver above 80,000 feet. They can hover and then instantly accelerate to supersonic and even hypersonic speeds. They have very low radar cross sections and use a means of propulsion and control that does not appear to involve combustion, exhaust, rotors, wings, or flaps. Later in the article, Chris Mellon writes, Some congressional oversight committees have asked for and received briefings, but none has held a hearing, either open or closed. None has appropriated funds for collection or analysis. None has even asked for a report or a threat assessment. Nor have Congress members expressed concern over apparently being kept in the dark on this issue for years by the executive branch, a situation that changed only after a small private organization to the Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences, which I advise on national security affairs, made Department of Defense gun camera footage available to the press and to Congress. Why are we not analyzing the vast quantities of data already collected by America's vast sensor networks, already bought and paid for, to see what light that data might shed on the issue? Government paralysis is something we've grown accustomed to on domestic matters, but when it affects national security as well, we truly are a nation at risk. Some would argue that the U.S. government has actually been studying the UFO presence since the 40s. I believe there is no question that they have. And indeed, Chris Mellon and Luis Elizondo may even be aware of this to some extent. But what's important to understand is that covert study of this phenomenon means absolutely zero to the American people, the executive and legislative branch of government, nor does it mean anything to the various social structures of society on our planet. If there are other programs like ATIP, that are far more well-funded and indeed have forensic evidence, just like ATIP, that proves we are not alone, yet they are completely classified so that no one knows about them, then as far as the world is concerned, they just don't exist. And there lies the problem. You simply can't have a conversation about a very real presence that's very interested in our biosphere and surveils and even sometimes tampers with our nuclear weapons when, when the respected social conventions of our, of our world, such as scientists, sincerely believe that this is simply not going on. This must change. Otherwise, we're just living in denial of reality. Whether we know it or not, the American people and the world at large simply deserve better. Wouldn't you agree? Don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. Link is in the description below. Or you can even become a patron. Or you can just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.